Hello Phil Man fans and welcome back to Day of the Day Day with me Phil Man in which I explain what the Day of the Day is today. Happy National Disc Jockey Day everyone. Can you believe that National Disc Jockey Day has rolled around again? First we had violins, next we had rock and roll music and now we have electronic dance music. What will be the next music craze? A vole coughing into a pancake. But before that musical delight arrives, we have the DJ. So let's celebrate our disc jockeys on National Disc Jockey Day. DJs can be divided into roughly two groups. The first group are people that press play on their iPod in return for a lot of money. And the second group are weird spheres that ride horses around. But we all know about that second type of disc jockey, so let's focus on the first. Being a DJ nowadays is quite hard work. You have to juggle having a Class A drug habit, alcoholism and standing in a dark box for five hours pressing one button after turning up for work at 11 p.m at night. In this way you're quite similar to a factory worker or an executioner or a drone pilot in the fight against ISIS. Only instead of dropping bombs on innocent children you're dropping fat beats on not innocent children. In the past though being a DJ was very different. You had to actually carry a box of vinyl to work instead of your phone and press two or three buttons instead of one and the drugs were much lower quality. Many disc jockeys in the 60s and 70s considered themselves superstars of music, stars of TV and radio, but we all know their main passion was the ancient Greeks, because just like the ancient Greeks, they interfered with children. Hey, it was the 70s, it was a different time, is the type of excuse you might hear from someone 10 years older than you that thinks 10 years means it's a different epoch. We didn't have flavoured syrups in coffee shops in 1974. We didn't know you weren't supposed to ignore consent. One can only think that something really happened in the 90s to change society for the better. And that was the Tamagotchi. That group of pooping little pixels really fixed society. Because society is fixed now, right? To the average person, this and this are indistinguishable. But to a DJ, the first one can be metabolised into sustenance instead of food. And the second one is a deadly poison that will kill them instantly. Uh, warning, don't don't watch this if you're a... Oh, Jesus. How do I know this? Well, my first degree was in being a disc jockey, and many of my friends went on to get their PhD in wearing sunglasses indoors. I actually did quite well at the DJ degree, you know. Uh, many people thought that my choice of playing Verdi's Dies Irae in between every song... was an unusual choice, but I quite liked it. I was only expelled because I couldn't say, What's good, ma? to people with a low body fat percentage. The first DJ, of course, was famously the Pied Piper of Hamlin, who took his sick beats, or some might even say banging tunes, to the small hamlet of Hamlin. And there, like all DJs, he messed around with the children. But he was enabled by people that have to wear a tie to work, and as a result, thinking that putting a playlist together is a creative job and that's why they have to pretend to be magical special fairies at the weekends. Many people ask me, how can I become a DJ? And the answer is the same as becoming an artist or an actor or a comedian or an Instagram influencer. Just have very rich parents. Some of the most popular EDM artists, that's Electronic Dance Macchiato, include Shrillex, Dead Mal 5, Jeremy Corbyn, acts of terrorism in the audience, and that guy from The Office who thinks he can beatbox because he met Beardy Man's brother once in the back room of a pub in Glasgow. So let's appreciate our disc jockeys now because once they're gone they'll be replaced by the six CD changer in your dad's Volvo or Kanye West eating a piece of really chewy toffee very noisily. Happy National Disc Jockey Day, you idiot. <laughs>